welcome to Marriage and Life Stories with Kansi May. And today we are excited to host Mr. and Mrs. Dewo to dis tell us their story of their movement from the US to Uganda. And uh, I really want to know, what can make a young couple to shift from the American dream to come and start life all together in Uganda? You're an American citizen, right? Yes. And you're a Ugandan citizen, yes. but you've been in the U.S. for quite a long time. Tell us about yourselves. Look in the camera and tell the viewers about yourselves, and we'll go straight into the question, why did you leave America for Uganda? Well, my name is Asha, and yes, I'm an American citizen. I'm from Michigan. Um, been in America my whole life, and... Um, I was in America, I was doing social work, um, working, going to university, and, and then we met and got married and started just planning life together. Wow. Dale? Yes, and I am Dale, and uh, I grew up here in Uganda until I was the age of 13. Then we later immigrated to the United States, and I, I lived there for about 15 years. Uh, in that time, I went to university, and uh, I met Asha. And uh, just going through the different things in, in, in America, that, that's what made our decision a little bit easier to finally come back and experience Uganda. Wow. Now, I will be blunt with you. Most of our young people in Uganda, they are always looking forward to a life in America. They feel everything in America is every person's dream. But you're here. You've left <laughs> America, you've come to Uganda. Why did you make that choice? Well, for me, being an African American, it's because um, all of the slave trade and everything. So many African Americans do not know like where they come from, like what tribe in Africa. Mm -hmm they come from. So for me, it was more of trying to find like ancestors. Yeah. Ancestor. Like not well in the sense of like where do my people come from? Mm -hmm. Like visiting the continent. Um I know more than likely I'm not from Uganda, more of the west <laughs> side of Africa. Uh -huh. But just being here, just learning different learning the Ugandan culture, learning um you know, the mannerisms of the people, mm -hmm. the foods, and so I just find that really fascinating, just being able to learn, you know, somewhere close to where I oh, came yeah. from. You, you, um, you're like trying to look for your roots. Yes. <laughs> well, let me tell you, you, you found your roots already. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to start a new life and mm -hmm. a new generation where your children will know our mm -hmm. roots are in Uganda. And, and let me tell you, you look more of the Igbo, mm -hmm. the Igbo or Yoruba, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> somewhere in West Africa, mm -hmm. but okay, you now belong to Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> tell me, of all people, of all the girls in Uganda, why did you choose her? I chose her for obviously, obvious reasons, she's mm -hmm. very beautiful, mm -hmm. she has a beautiful smile, mm -hmm. but also just she has such a calming nature and also her love for God was and, a very big thing. And that's what I was going to, to ask you next. Because you say she's beautiful, she has this calm smile. Sometimes the smile goes, <laughs> okay? And it's not there. <laughs> and then she will age and the, and the beauty is not as excellent as you really wanted it to be. And so what remains is that internal beauty. Even when someone is cannot see, even when someone cannot talk, there is that inside beauty that you can still hang on. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned the calm nature. Mm -hmm. Do you have any fears about work, about how you're going to raise a family, about how you're going to be able to sustain yourself? Um, just being human, those things come, especially moving from one um, continent to another. Mm -hmm. But also, because we have a strong faith in God, and we've seen Him over the years of us being married, you know, supply our every need. We've never been without food, nowhere to stay, even, you know, just the extra finance to do things we just want to do. Mm -hmm. And so we rely on God, you know, um, for our everyday 
livelihood. <laughs> and so, and you know, I just, we put our trust in God and we also planned before mm -hmm. we moved. So that's a big thing, making sure your finances are in order, mm -hmm. making sure, you know, that you brought the things that you need. So when you do get to, well, for me moving to Uganda, I have, you know, the ne basic necessities that I need, um, at least to sustain me for a while till I can find where to find things in Uganda. And so, um, and then other than that, just basically just putting your trust in God. And the good thing, thing is that uh, Uganda, I think they are the most friendly people in mm -hmm. the whole world. Someone will love you. They will go out of their way to make sure that you, you, a stranger is happy, a stranger is okay. And so I don't think you're going to have a lot of difficulties living around here. Now, I will go back to the gentleman, Dale. What are the most important things that a young man should know when they are choosing a wife? So first of all, you have to know um, your values. So don't go away from your values. Ever since being raised, I was raised in a household with a teacher and a reverend. Mm -hmm. And so they instilled a lot of values in me, first of all, fearing God and getting in tune with the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. when I was looking for a mate, I was looking for somebody who has the same values mm -hmm. because I knew that would take me longer. Mm -hmm. Like my parents have been married over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so and my- And still so much in love. Exactly. So my template was that. I wanted to have that kind of relationship. And I, I saw that the first thing is finding somebody who shares the same values as you. Mm -hmm. And so then you can be able to, you'll be on one accord, you'll be able to have, be on the same page yes. and it avoids a lot of arguments, mm -hmm. it avoids a lot of, of things that could cause conflict. Yes. Now, I have seen celebrity marriages here in Uganda crash. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy goes after a beautiful girl and she's like every man's dream. Mm -hmm. One year, two years down the road, he's running after another beautiful girl. Talk to those young people. <laughs> so the, the main thing with that is the, uh, a spirit of contentment. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend of mine, his, his main thing for not getting married was because he said if you go to the girl, he would be thinking about the ones who are out there mm -hmm. where, who he has missed. <laughs> so I told him you can't think like that, I you know? know. Enjoy the one that you have. Mm -hmm. In the Bible it says you have to enjoy the one you And make everything beautiful about her. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So enjoying and, and uh, really, really, really taking the, uh, and appreciating mm -hmm. what you have mm -hmm. instead of looking for all Always these things. looking for what is good. Exactly. In other words, you can make the good that you want from everybody else. You can make that good into your beautiful wife. Exactly. Oh, good. Exactly. So, guys, you have heard it from your fellow <laughs> young man. Be content with what you have and make everything that you desire beautiful around the one that you have. They are handsome young men in the U.S. Very romantic. They know how to pull the chairs. I'm sure Ugandans don't know. Pull the chairs for the lady. Open the car door. You will find it strange around here. Why did you choose for? Of all the people, why did you choose me? <laughs> well, honestly, like the men that you just described, those are men I used to date in my past life. You know, and then after a while, you see, they call it like true colors. So at first, they're really nice to you and mm -hmm. things. And then after a while, it's like they flip. You know, after you get, because after they get comfortable with what, you. What they were mm -hmm. doing was not from within. Yes. It was so just to beat you up. They were acting <laughs> to have you on the hook. Mm -hmm. And when you're there, the real one comes. Mm -hmm. oh. And the main thing, too, that I found, I know in our first conversation, we before we even really started dating, we started talking about God. So that was something that was different for me. Ah. Because when you, like a lot of people in the US, United States do not believe in God or they're, they don't like really put their lives you know, mm -hmm. in God's hands, they kind of, oh yeah, I believe in God and they do what they want to do, you mm -hmm. know? And so, and you would ask the guy, like, you want to go to church? No. Uh, why do I want to go to church? And this and that. So those were things that I was like, okay, this is not, mm -hmm. you're not for me. You don't even want to step inside of a church. Mm -hmm. And so when I met Dale, I remember we were talking about God in our first conversation. So and I was like, God was yes. the first 
your unifying factor. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. And then I asked him, do you want to go to church? And then ever since then, we've been going to church every, um, every Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, together. Um, right when we started dating. And mm -hmm. so we kind of just built our, well, dating and marriage on, you know, God. Mm -hmm. So it was just, it was kind of like, we were just like friends that like, like we just, what do you call it? Like connected, like right away. Yes. <laughs> so that's how I kind of knew in the beginning, like, oh, he's different. And, yes. you know, this might be the one, so. <laughs> And it turned out the one. Mm -hmm. Now in Africa, we produce eight, seven, nine, ten children. Yeah. <laughs> so far, even him one. How many are we expecting? We. So oh, oh, so when I first <laughs> met Dale, I added to three in your mind. <laughs> when I first met Dale, we were talking about how many children he wanted. Mm -hmm. He told me he wanted eleven. Uh -huh. So I told him. Eleven. That's a true. Lagi, lagi, children. And then those others, we adopt or we're something. <laughs> yeah, they're not all. <laughs> they're not uh, all well, so then we, after our first, we have one now. After our first, he narrowed it down maybe four, mm -hmm. Woo, maybe two. <laughs> like, uh, I think you start working with the ones that you have. Like a strong God. Yes. God doesn't want you to have what you cannot, um, <laughs> what will break her down and what you cannot afford to take mm -hmm. care of. You will have what God has planned mm -hmm. for you. Even when they are 11 and God has planned for yeah. you, they will keep coming. Even to the one that God has planned for you, mm -hmm. she will be the one. Mm -hmm. Oh, we thank God so much for you. Tell the ladies. Now here in Uganda, you will find many ladies um, tied marriage to money. You know, by the time he's getting married, he says he has to have a car. He must have a good job. He must have a house. Meanwhile, she has no job, her brother or even her father doesn't have a car, she doesn't have a house she's living in, but she's demanding a young man to have those. Talk to her ladies. So my first thing is, as a young woman, like before I even met Dale or anything, is I build myself up. So I went to university, got, you know, I have a master's, got a master's, I worked. I even, for a while in the U.S., it's not uncommon for a woman to live by herself. Um, so I had my own apartment, my own car. So I build myself up, just in case, because you never know, you might get married at an older age or, you know, so it's best that you work to build yourself. And then when you get in a relationship, you can add to your husband. Um, so versus just trying to take, take, take. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing is to add you know, mm -hmm. mutually, you guys can work together financially, mm -hmm. and um, you guys can, yeah, and so it just makes the relationship more rich because you're both bringing in to, you know, mm -hmm. provide and take care, and, and also I feel like, for me, I love doing things for my husband, so when I have my own finances, I'm like, okay, I can go buy him a suit, I could go buy him wow. something nice, this is or, yes, yeah, so, or I know he likes this, I can go buy him you know, things that he likes. So, and it just makes me feel more independent when I have my own. Wow, yeah. I, I thank you so much for this part one of the discussion. And uh, I look forward to having you again in the next discussion. And kindly subscribe, like, and uh, yes, share this video that other people will love. Goodbye for now.